what is each archetype or archetypal setup best suited to? Now don't worry, there's gonna be no math in this video. I'm not giving up on the math though, love the math. And this is all just my own opinion. I've got no evidence or anything to try and back this up with. This is just me running around like a lunatic with a variety of different archetypes and trying to figure out what each archetype is sort of best suited to. And obviously, since we can have two archetypes along with having different in a primary slot does alter the overall effect of what a build is capable of. There is much here in the grounds of customization, and I've tested quite a few things. There are obviously going to be things I haven't tested, either just out of it didn't cross my mind, or for me personally, there was no point. A good example of this is Alchemist and Medic in any combination. I've not tested these in a DPS capacity, because let's face it, whatever it is they can do in dps and i'm not saying they can't do dps but let's face it they are going to be a better healer and support setup than they are going to be a dps setup so i just haven't tested healer and alchemist together in a dps setup for obvious reasons anyway i have categorized the builds as follows burst dps which is high upfront damage sustained dps which is high long-term damage Support, which is able to buff a team, offer more ammo, drops, or in some cases even heal. Support pets, basically the same as above support, but it also has additions, as in doggo or summoner stuff. Tank, able to mitigate a lot of damage, heal through damage, and also pressure the enemy directly. Pets, the capabilities are split between the player as well as the additions, so they're able to fit multiple roles, but just in like a lesser degree. This means that they can do burst DPS as well as tank, but they're not quite as bursty as a burst DPS or as tanky as a tank. These are very capable builds, and I believe they're actually one of the favourite among the endgame players in Apocalypse. Melee is a bit of a weird one, although melee can do pretty well there is obviously the scenario of things flying around a lot so you can't always melee them so just because i'm categorizing these as melee doesn't mean this is all they are able to do they still have good range and just overall good damage capabilities but they're able to make better use of melee weapons than some of the other archetype setups and then healer which is essentially just another support but rather than giving buffs ammo more drops etc it is literally just shielding as well as healing on the flip side these can also revive downed teammates anyway i made this which is pretty self-explanatory cross sheet so on the left hand side challenger handler hunter gunsling and medic alchemist explorer summoner engineer invader archon in yellow with a black box i think it's yellow these are going to be our primaries and then obviously along the top we have our secondary and these are just what I have found that these archetypal setups are best suited to. Although, like I said, this is just my own opinion. Anyway, we're just going to give this a quick deep dive. Well, not deep dive, a skimming dive. I'm just going to go over why I've put them in this situation or category. Anyway, up first, our primaries are going to be challenger. Secondary is going to be handler. For this, I find this to actually be a very good tanky setup. Challenger giving a strong back, which means we can put heavier armor on with lower encumbrance. And then with the either the damage mitigation or the healing doggo, we're able to actually manage our own health quite reliably. Along with if we get a little bit of siphon in there for some lifesteal, we are actually able to be pretty damn tanky. And then if we are wanting to be a little bit more tanky for Challenger, we are able to opt into utilizing Juggernaut, which is going to make us very tanky. Or if we feel we need more damage, we can go for Rampage, although the cooldown on this can become a bit of a problem. But overall, I do feel this is a pretty decent tanking set. Obviously, though, there are going to be better. Challenger and Hunter, this is very good for a burst DPS setup, mainly just because Rampage. It is absolutely stupid how much damage you can get from that. And then just having the passive from Hunter being another 40% range damage, along with the fact that the damage talents or the skills from hunter are all very very powerful why you would put them as challenger as primary hunter and secondary i'm not too sure maybe you want to get into the dps but you're not quite 
happy playing the full glass cannon setup yet, so you're relying on the Challenger revive, but other than that, this still does make for a very good burst setup. For pretty much the exact same reasons, we will have Challenger Gunslinger in the burst area as well. In with Challenger and Medic, this makes for an absolutely superb tank, mainly just because Medic has the skill of healing shield, alternating between Juggernaut and healing shield, along with strong back, and actually also being able to utilize a little bit more healing while that shield is active, along with other buffs that just incorporate utilizing shield mechanics. This does make for a very good and very powerful tank. Pretty much again in the exact same vein, we have Challenger and Alchemist. This time though, we have options to either use Stone Mist for more damage mitigation or Elixir of Life for essentially just overhauling our healing. And if we do go down, Elixir of Healing can get us up. Having Challenger self-revive and then Elixir of Healing self-revive, although it's not going to be the most ideal thing for being a tank, being able to repeatedly just self-revive does become pretty damn powerful. Now we have Challenger as well as Explorer. This one was quite difficult to pin down, although I did settle on tank simply just because of the Gold Digger perk. Now annoyingly, Gold Digger will offer four separate buffs, either 10% damage increase, a 15% damage mitigation, 2% health regeneration per second, or haste. Now in terms of tanking, we have two options, the hill, or the 15% damage mitigation. In terms of dishing out damage, we have one option, but this could also benefit a tank, because you don't have to tank things if things are dead. The only one that didn't really become an option would be haste, which does kind of put this in line with being a tank. Add in Juggernaut, and we actually do end up being pretty damn tanky. The only issue is, in order to actually become completely viable with this setup you also do end up having to be stationary and just bounce in and out and around the fountain that gold digger will spawn then we have challenger with summoner coming at a surprise to no one this is also a pretty good tanky setup mainly just because you're able to wear heavier armor from challenger and summoner gives regrowth i'm aware it's not a lot of healing but just being able to passively heal does actually be pretty damn useful and then in combination of things like bark skin which is reduces all damage by 10 percent and then we are able to obviously because we are summoner we can also add in blood bond which means summons absorb 10 percent of all damage taken effectively giving us another 20 percent damage mitigation now i'm not too sure if this works per summon which means if you've got the flyers you can have two flyers pretty sure if you use the amulet that gives you two as well you could potentially have two of near enough everything but the end result is you're pretty damn tanky now we have challenger as well as engineer and with the original sheet some of you might have noticed that some of them are highlighted in yellow challenger engineer tank yellow and the reason for this is i personally would argue that these are the best archetypes in that particular role in short i personally would argue that challenger as primary and engineer as secondary makes for the best tank setups in the game purely just because you have a self revive as well as strong back mixed in with fortify allows you to get so much more out of your armor setups add in a few rings a bit of shielding if you wanted and you're able to actually compensate what other archetypes would give you essentially making you the tankiest setup in the game now we have Challenger and Invader. I've put this down as melee, although like I said, this doesn't mean this is all it excels at. These will still do some pretty hefty damage. They're also going to excel at shotguns because of how Challenger is very close range and the Invader near enough requiring a lot of movement. However, due to the sheer uptime of the damage that you'll have at this at close range, it does mean you'll also benefit from melee a hell of a lot. And then last on the Challenger setup, we have Archon. I've got this down as sustained DPS, simply just because you're able to essentially chop and change between mod activation, powering Archon, and Rampage, powering Challenger. Doing this right does allow you to get some absolutely hilarious sustained damage out, especially if you do pick archons chaos gate obviously this does mean you're going to be a bit more squishy but luckily challenger actually helps mitigate a little bit of this allowing us to put on heavier armor with 
lower effect on our encumbrance. Now we're going to be moving into Handler as primary. So first up is Handler and Challenger. Despite the fact that Challenger and Handler does make for an excellent tank, Handler Challenger kind of puts this in a more of a supporting role simply because we can now opt to have that dog revive allies as well as the simple fact of challengers prime perk die hard has a 10 minute cooldown for the revive whereas handlers bonded has a 90 second cooldown i imagine this is because die hard doesn't take into account your relics whereas bonded does handler hunter this I've got marked down as sustained DPS, despite the fact that Hunter is okay at survivability simply because of Shroud. This does mean that you're able to opt into other sources of damage, whether it be Hunter's Focused or Hunter's Mark. The dog just allows you to potentially either just do more damage or increase your survivability through healing or damage mitigation. And due to you not having the Hunter's Prime perk, sustained DPS is still going to be pretty much your only option. This is basically the exact same story for Handler and Gunslinger. The only twist to this is Handler offers range as well as skill damage, which means Gunslinger's quick draw skill is going to become a bit more powerful and a hell of a lot of damage as and when you need it. Then we have Handler and Medic. This makes for a pretty good support build. It's not going to be direct healing depending on what skills you pick. You might go for the damage mitigation doggo or the damage overall doggo. You could go for the healing doggo. You might go for the revive and the healing doggo, which would put you straight in line with healing. You could go for the shield or the damage mitigation. It's entirely up to you, but overall this does end up being a sort of support build. It heavily leans into the healing, but that's not all it can do which is also basically the exact same story for Handler and Alchemist, as well as Handler and Explorer. The caveat to Handler and Explorer is it's either the strongest or the weakest, depending on how you want to look at it. If you're an endgame player and you're helping out some new friends, Handler and Explorer is absolutely amazing, especially when it comes to gearing them up and getting them new and shiny stuff. However, if you are playing on Apocalypse and trying to do like a challenge run of any description, Handler and Explorer very quickly falls off. Now we have Handler and Summoner, and this is our first support pet build. It is also one that I've highlighted as being the best in this sort of category, simply just because we can get a lot of damage and output and survivability from Summoner. However, Handler also offers us a lot of team as well as self buff through either increasing our damage damage mitigation or indeed more healing it ends up being a pretty good setup especially if you're just wanting to just run around casually or join random groups you don't really have to do too much you can just let your summons and your dog take care of most of the work for you while you just sit back and buff your team this is very much in the same vein as handler and engineer where I find Handler and Summoner is very good for running around dungeons, I do find Handler and Engineer to be a better option when fighting bosses. The heavy weapons, the turrets, are actually pretty damn powerful, and you can also buff these by utilising the dog. Both of these archetypes also give an increase to skill damage, which means you can get an awful lot of damage out of the turret. And for a high IQ move, just tell your teammates to put on the singed ring while you run the flamethrower turret. You can also put on the ring that increases damage by 5% for each status effect, have one person run acid with bleed, another run electric with any form of slow effect, and congratulations you have just gotten a 35% increase for literally running two rings. Handler Invader is a bit of a strange one, I honestly don't see why you would do this but I might also just be missing something amazing however I did find that in terms of its overall performance it did excel pretty well at burst managing the uptime of invaders passives and then just activating the dog's howl for more damage did seem to be a pretty good way to go however it was the cooldowns that really hurt this setup and for the last on the handers list is going to be handler with archon I've put this down as burst DPS and the main reason for this is simply just because of the Archon's level 10 skill which is Havoc Form. Handler, like I've previously said, offers a buff or a damage bonus to skill damage 
by up to 30%. So being able to go into Havoc form to do 30% increased damage while in this mode, and if you do go down, have the dog revive you, is pretty damn worthwhile. However, it is completely reliant on managing the cooldowns. Having the dog on guard form, which is going to give another 20% to all damage, is also very, very powerful. And that is going to be it for part one of this mini-series, mainly just because I underestimated how much I was going to ramble on about this. When we come back to this, we're going to be going over Hunter, Gunslinger, as well as Medic. Hunter and Gunslinger are mostly going to be identical. They're both very good at dishing out damage. So there's going to be some slight variations when it gets to some weird and wacky things like mixing Hunter and Gunslinger with things like Explorer, Alchemist and a few other things but other than that they're mostly going to be identical and obviously if we've got medic as our primary we're obviously going to be looking at some very interesting support setups however in the meantime have fun good luck and don't die it's bad for the health